I must have been the only survivor. I'm all alone on some deserted island. Getting out of this bloody sand. It's gotten in my underwear and it's driving me nuts. Nasty stuff. found. It's a shoe. Yes, that's right. It's a shoe. What am I supposed to do with a shoe? Silly, you blow into it. Oh, oh, blow into it, of course. Explain yourself. What do you mean a shoe? We're trapped on an island. Yes, but you see, you blow it to sound it like a horn. My, my auntie, she used to do it all the time. It's a shoe horn. A shoehorn. Yeah. How am I supposed to blow this? You see, it, it would be like, you know, uh, assembly at school. Yes, exactly. Except without the uh, stage flags, the seating and the school. So, oh, thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> Maybe it's like a silent dog whistle. Maybe you're not doing it right. It's a shoe! I'll try again. Look, I'm not a Louis Armstrong with this thing. I'll try again.
out. We were about to sing the grand finale to Sir Gregory's Ode to Gout when look out crowd, there goes Salmon, falling off the stage, cracking his head on the, on the platform, and popping right into the Prime Minister, the First Lady's lap. And I, I, Jack Cadu, had to apologize to his lordship myself for his despicable display. Never hear me complain? No! And now, to add insult to injury, to walk salt into the wound, I even have this god for a second island. Simon here has taken it upon himself to be injured at the most inopportune moments. Oh, hair do, hair do, I can't swim! Oh, hair do, hair do, I've broken my leg! I think the bone's pulling through. Well, I've had enough of it, you hear? Enough! As far as I'm concerned, salmon is one fish you can throw back into the ocean. Trap well, to it! Go on quiet, drag him into the sea, splash the water on him. Maybe it'll wake him up or we'll get lucky and he'll drown. Now, there's just one thing, just one thing I want you to know! What? Hello, my name is Doc Hedge. And your name is? Uh, I'm Ralph. Oh, and the bad one is? He's, uh, uh, Porky. 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 <laughs> I see. How very interesting. So tell me, which one of you was blowing that damnable seashell? Shoehorn. Quite. Who was blowing this damn thing? Blowing it? Yeah. Uh, he was! What? You lie! It was you! No, it was you! It was you! It was you! You! It was you! It was you! It was you! It, was you. it, was you. it, it doesn't matter who was blowing the shoehorn. Why were you blowing it? Well, he, if I... It was being blown so that perhaps we could assemble all of the survivors from the crash here in one place. Oh, I see, Caruso. So now that we're all gathered here, what would you have us do? Perhaps roast a few weenies around a campfire, maybe sing a few campfire songs? Well, apparently you are a choir master. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Hairdo, but uh, before you uh, go off into another one of your tirades, uh, can I take down the names of all of your choir members? Oh, how nice. How grand. Chance is making a list. and. Would this Santa Claus would be me checking his list twice to see who's naughty and nice? No mystery there. Well then, my fine frabby friend, 
Let me introduce to you my unfortunate gaggle of companions. Here we have Raja, and here we have her. No, this is Raja, and that's her. No, no. Give me a note. Oh. Ah, yes. Here we have Harold, and here we have Raja, and you've met our resident hypochondriac, Salmon. Are you sure he's not really hurt? Oh, nonsense. Oh. I think a brief walk wouldn't cure him. It is a fiddle. And now then, why were we baking out here in the sun? Oh. Oh, I know. I was going to say that I blew this shoe so that perhaps we could assemble all of the survivors here in one place. And here's a rule to keep order, everyone. Only the person holding this shoe can speak at an assembly. And who put you in charge? Well, I'm the one who found this shoe. And I put my lips on this thing. And I think I should be in charge. Because, you see, it's simple. I have the best looking uniform. I can sing the sea sharp. And I'm the head of the choir. Oh, and uh, I'm perfect. <laughs> Excellent qualification those, those are, sir. I happen to be the headmaster's son. Ah. Now quiet down, everyone. I've got the shoe. Uh, what if I bring my own shoe to the assemblies? Then I can speak whenever I want to? No, no, no. It has to be this shoe. All right, then. What if there's someone you don't want to? Suddenly grabs the shoe from hey. you. Hey! It's us naming every major city in alphabetical order from Great Britain. Look, I don't know. I haven't gotten that far yet. I suppose someone did. Look, I don't know. Anyway, you can't speak. I've got the shoe. Haha, -ha, but you didn't call an assembly. Yes, I did. I blew it. I blew the shoe. You that's, did. That's the symbol of an assembly. I think not, Dale boy. Since this cannot qualify as an assembly, since so uh, we didn't know what it was before we got here. Well, you know now. And the fact that I'm holding the shoe means that an assembly is in progress. All right, then. I have the shoe, and I will talk about anything I want to. No, uh, look, you just can't grab the shoe. It doesn't count unless I give it to the person. Well, I did grab your shoe. What are you going to do about it? give you some demerits. What? Demerits? What can I possibly do out here? Ah, sweep the beach. Oh, maybe wash the scrub off of the seashells. Oh, I know. Perhaps keep the wrangle up jungle nice and tidy. Let's just say I let you out the shoe. Now what do you want to say? That was a smashing rugby game in Brookshire last week, wasn't it? Boy! Thank you for that completely worthless contribution. Now, if we can get back to reality for a moment here, what I was trying to tell you all is that whenever I blow this shoe, you have to come from wherever you are on the island and meet here immediately. Supposing we're all asleep? You still come. What if I'm on the other side? You still come. What, what if, if we're, we're going, going to, to the bathroom? bathroom? Look, it doesn't matter what you're doing or where you are. Just come to the assembly area when I blow the shoe. Is that clear? Well, what if I don't want to come? Well then, in that case, when you heard the shoe blown, you wouldn't come to the assembly area, but should proceed to the highest cliff on this island and fling yourself off. Oh, really? Well, shellfish breath. As it just so happens, I'm an Olympic class diver. So what aren't you? I aren't impressed with your leadership skills. All right, that does it. I'm going to have to kill you. 
Now, 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 you two, stop that. Stop that. We mustn't bicker and argue amongst ourselves. We must set a good example by cooperating and keeping that cheerful attitude as to keep spirits high. Oh, oh shut, shut up. up! Right. Wait a minute, Porky's right. If we're ever to get anything done in this island, we've got to work together as a team. Now let's see. The first thing I think we should do is build a signal fire. That way we can attract the attention of some sort of passing ship or plane. Oh. It'll be our symbol of hope oh. and faith. Oh yes, right. So many pilots are going to take that moronic route that our pilot took right through a German artillery base. There'll be prisoners before morning. Despite Jock's optimistic visions of an early rescue, I still say that we build a fire. Where shall we build it, Ralph? Hmm. Up there. Just me, Salmon, or does it seem that a certain person among us didn't carry any firewood? Well, I didn't want to say anything, Kelp. Ralp! Quite. But... Uh, but you could stand, lose a little bit of weight. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Believe me, you'll thank me for this someday. I'm doing you a favor. Oh, thank you very much for your consideration for my physique. Uh, no problem. And what would be your excuse for salmon here? Exactly. That boy needs some muscles on his frame. And I can't think of a better way of doing that than by carrying a load of kindling up a hill. A hill? A hill. Jack, Mount Kilimanjaro is a hill. This is the 90 degree cliff from hell. It's not my fault you had so much trouble getting up here. I mean, if you hadn't been so careless the last 300 feet of the way, perhaps you wouldn't have fallen down that huge crevasse. Someone was stepping on my fingers. <laughs> tut, 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 Kelp, mustn't blame others for your own inadequacies. Well, you could have at least grabbed me. Ah, are you mad? These manicures cost me 50 pounds apiece. So, where is Bubble Butt right now, anyway? Well, I wanted to leave someone capable back at the camp to start setting up with the others. So why didn't you? Yes! Yes! What? what, what? Shoot! It would appear your simple pope won't start.
I think I hear them over this way. Now, Salmon, don't forget to remind me to send someone up there to check that pile. So what do you suppose poor crime is doing presently? Hmm? Maybe opening a small post office, establishing a small census bureau? Look, Jock, I have complete faith in Porky's judgment. I'm certain that things are getting done. Now, come on. There we are. Look, they're doing something productive even as we speak. Hmm. The camp symbolizes hope and teamwork. Hmm. Speak to me! I don't think he can. He seems to be at the end of his rope. <laughs> Get you up here. Yes, truly really an amazing task. I <laughs> you know I shouldn't have believed them when they said there was a double fun Sunday up in the tree. But I walked over there and before I knew it, I was enslaved and at their mercy. I tried to scream, but they put an apple in my mouth. Oh! Ah, I would have used a coconut. Well, adults would never behave like this. Oh, quit your blubbering. It was only a harmless little prank. Prank! Prank! This was purely an act of intentional malice. This cannot go unpunished. I'm calling an assembly. Where's the shoe? Oh, Ralph! They took the shoe from me. God only knows what they did with it. Oh, give me that. Everyone, gather around. Him. Uh, Jack, where are your other choir members? Oh, I'm so sorry. They couldn't make this taping day today. Oh. No. All right, then the rest of you. What you did to Porky was wrong. Very wrong. Yes, you should have killed him while you had the chance. And you shut up. I've got the shoe. Oh, well, that means a lot coming from an idiot that assigned that loaf over there to oversee a bunch of 12-year-olds who are clearly more intelligent than they are. I am a hollow reed. The wind passes through me. I am a hollow reed. <sighs> now then, you just can't run around here like a bunch of wild animals. We've got to get things done if we're ever to be rescued. We've got to work together. That's all I wanted to say. Does anyone else have anything to say? Oh, no, no, I'm in complete agreement. Oh. <laughs> what? Oh, yes, I said I'm in complete agreement. Well, all right. A then. harbor. Ah, I knew it. A harbor. I think that we should divide up the group so as to get twice or three times the amount of work done. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> very good idea. <laughs> Quite. Um, well then, uh, Salmon, Porky, you go with me. Uh, Jack, you take your choir members ah, or yeah. wherever they are. Right. Uh, the twins and Percival and Robin and, and Peter, you all go together. Now let's see, what can we do first? Ah! First, we'll start building some shelters. Exactly. Then, we'll start collecting some food. Oh, quite so, quite so. And then, I think we should Absolutely. begin... Absolutely! Why are you agreeing with me? Well, I think all these things are necessary to ensure a proper survival. I see. Right. Well, let's get building.
you. Okay. Hey, Peter. Look at this neat weed I found. It's perfect for the shelter. Let's poison over you, idiot. <laughs> Not so fast, Braveheart. <laughs> You'll have to do better than a squirt gun to defeat me, Retard. Ah, but that's what you think. This is no ordinary squirt gun. This is, in fact, an enema! <laughs> I'm not an actor. I can't believe this is, this is not an actor. I signed a contract. Hey, man. Paramount. 
I signed the contract. Yeah, sign another one. <laughs> no, Bob. Bob, Mr. Pinto. Yeah. Jerky. Hey. video monitor up so that I could watch the Playboy channel? Mr. Perry, as I've told you before, on many occasions, Dawkins do not have emotions. <laughs> However, revenge is not an emotion. <laughs> I'm telling you, Chick Letty, the Marquis crew aboard Scavenger are not receiving the same rights and privileges as the Confederation crew. You must be imagining things, Bologna. I think the captain's done a fine job of integrating our people. And tell me why. Only yesterday, when I was waiting in line for dinner in the commissary, Ensign Dirk was received a generous portion of eight lima beans, and I only received seven. Oh, uh, listen, that's your socks. Report. Commander, degrees fire in cargo bay two has been extinguished. Excellent. Oh, uh, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. The next time you're down there, make sure the men wear their regulation gloves. The last time I shook Ensign Feldman's hand, he left me a discolored present. I'll make a note of it. Very good. Mr. Hurt! Yes? You said that you were using the restroom. I did. Seven hours ago. Have you seen the new wallpaper in stellar cartography? It's quite breathtaking. Apparently so is a stellar cartographer. Oh, you mean Lieutenant Ireland? Oh, she's nice, but not really my type. Anyway, this little escapade's going to cost you. I have to put you down for extra duty on the trash compactor. Chick Letty. You do that to me after I saved your life? Come on. I'm your friend. All right, all right, you're right. 
right? I can't do it. Man your stations. Damn, 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 damn. We have to see the captain right away. Where is Captain Plainway? The captain's down below practicing her menacing skull. How can I help you, Felix? Miss has been having strange dreams. Sounds like she's been eating in the commissary again. I felt a great disturbance, as if a million voices cried out in terror or suddenly silent. Ah, oh, the meatloaf special. Well, I'll have you know that I'm famous throughout the quadrant for my cooking. No wonder we've encountered so many hostile aliens. Commander, I'm picking up an unidentifiable space vessel of our starboard bow. On screen. Interesting. You're familiar with this life form? Uh, no, but can you imagine the amount of breath use they must generate? Oh, boy! Felix is correct. I do take enough TV dinner records to keep us busy for 10 standard years. Check that in a plane wave. Plane wave here. Captain, we've encountered an alien vessel. I'm on my way. Hi, Captain. Felix, do you have any information regarding this region of space? Well, there is this nice little bistro of just a few parsecs from here. They serve the hottest guacamole you'll ever wrap your lips around. <laughs> Allow me to clarify. Do you have any useful information regarding this region of space? Well, I believe we're in the Hoth system. Better break out the antifreeze, Miss Taurus. Things get really cold around these parts. So does Lieutenant Taurus. <laughs> all right, all right. planet in this sector. It might be a safe distance away from that stationary battle station. Hmm. Mr. Parrot, set a course. Aye, Captain. And once we arrive, I'd like to head an away party to investigate. Mr. Felix, you'll be our guide. Mr. Two Socks, Mr. Parrot, you'll accompany me. Ensign Bradley, get my socks out of the dryer. Yes, ma'am. Engage. Let's stop here. Damn, it's cold! 
Mr. Parrot, please watch your mouth. Sorry. <laughs> Holy <laughs> sh It's colder than a witch's... Captain, I'm detecting a large underground structure of some sort. Mr. Felix, what do you know about this? <laughs> Captain, it's quite remarkable, really, that you should inquire about such a thing inside... That you know absolutely nothing about. Oh, well, right. <laughs> Mr. Felix, you are a worthless creature with no valuable or redeeming attributes or qualities whatsoever. And your pointless and saturnine attempts at comic relief are even less engrossing than the waste of my precious time. So have you present me with some beneficial information, I'll remain here on this frozen and desolate iceberg until you solidify into a lifeless popsicle. Let's try right over there. I think I remember an underground structure or something. speak to you that way. He's the producer's kid. Oh. Commander, sensors indicate some large mechanical action on the surface of the planet. Oh, that would be the captain's acting. <laughs> I have a bad feeling about all of this. Captain Plainway, this is Chick Levy. Please respond. Captain, respond. Captain Plainway. Captain. large ridge over there, about 500 kilometers in front of us. It's under that big hill. Hey! Did you hear that? No. Oh, sorry. That was that Altrustrian taco I had for lunch. Shh. Listen. What is it, Mr. Parrot? Sounds like gears turning. Hey! I just felt the vibration coming from the ground. Me too. Mr. Two Socks. Captain. I detect eight large mobile what you would call it's heading our way. Are they dangerous? They are fully armed with the power to destroy a large city and to kill yippy little dogs. <laughs> a mixed blessing. The sensors indicate they should be coming into visual range just about <laughs> now. Good lord! Play me the scavenger. Respond. Plane wave the scavenger. Respond, please. Perhaps electrical waves emanating from the subterranean structure are temporarily interfering with our communication systems. Either that or maybe my battery's frozen. What are we going to do? Mr. Perry, come here. Blow on my communicator and see if that'll get it going. This way! Captain, I believe they have spotted us. Harry, run for it. <laughs> Is everyone all right? I think I broke my leg. Is everyone important all right? Where's the captain? Uh... Captain, are you injured? My head. It feels so light. Uh, look! My bone's missing. A mortal wound. This is serious. What about me? We must look for it. What? Are you crazy? Those four legged trash heaps are going to be coming this way. Highly unlikely. They are probably going back to their underground structure. We will find the captain's bun and then beam out of here. By then, we'll be out of the electrical range. All right, all right, fine. Let's get on with it. Hey, why, yes. 
Yes, I do believe you know my husband, Mr. Columbo. Here it is. Look. Mr. Parrot, that is a rock. Who cares? I want to get out of here. There. I found it. Okay, let's go already. Mr. Parrot, if you do not calm your emotions, I'll be forced to give you the Duncan Death Nugget. Two sides to scavenger. Three to beam up. Four. Four to beam up, sir. before we knew it, and then took Felix and, and threw him a thousand meters away. And just as he did that, he looked two socks and scared him straight into the eye. It made him think he was Barbara Eden. Well, just as that happened, it was only I who stood between this rancorous creature and the safety of the captain. Anyway, the rancorous beast was, was away. And so I, I came and jumped at that huge arachnid, picking him uh, high over my head carry him 800 meters to a huge precipice, just as I took him over my shoulder and threw him into a yawning gorge. That's what happened. I don't know, Mr. Parrot, but your story sounds... What? You're not calling me a liar after I saved your life? Chick Letty, I'm surprised at you. Well, all right. I suppose I can give you the benefit of the doubt. And a commendation. And a what? Please state the exact nature of the medical emergency. The captain's button was shut off. Uh, which one, the right or the left? On her head. I'm not familiar with that anatomical location. Of what species is the captain? Oh, for crying out loud, it's her hair bun, you idiot. Ah, uh, luckily my backup programming is in hair dressing. Uh, tricorder. Cosmetic tricorder. Captain, are you all right? There, all finished. Hey! Here's some help over here! Dang! Your hair is as good as new, Captain. You're fit to return to duty. Captain, how are you feeling? I'm um, fat. Um, and here's my bill. Uh, sorry to disturb you, sir. How is the captain? Surviving. Who's that with you? Sir, this is Ensign Trashy. Hiya! He just beamed aboard several minutes ago. What? We're quite trillion miles away from our galaxy. Sir, sir, I am your biggest fan. This is so cool. <gasps> Miss, Miss Mildew, can I please have your autograph? Where the hell are you? Look, this is a medical facility, not a stock slash convention. <gasps> cool. Dr. Suleiman, I love you. You're my favorite character. Can you please? Please, sign my official Star Trash fan magazine. Please, 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 please. Oh, I suppose I couldn't allow this in this for a few minutes. <sighs> what are you doing here? Well, I sent, I sent in about eight million box tops from the Fruit Island cereal. A yumma yumma? Sweepstakes. And I want a guest appearance role on Star Trash Stanger. So, here I am. You've got to be joking. So, what cool episodes we do this week? Intergalactic, intergalactic battles? Time paradoxes? Alien monsters? The captain got her bun shut off. Oh, writers. What can you do about them? Can't live with them? Can't shoot them. Well, I'm off to see the rest of the ship. Toodles! Oh, boy! And don't touch any of those little blue buttons. This Saluki could be useful. His records show complete knowledge of over 7,000 Star Trash episodes, including the original series, The Next Generation, Creep Space Nine, Scavenger, and all the films, even the dopey Christmas specials. I'll look into it. Captain, you still need plenty of rest. Be sure to take two blue snits and hail me in the morning. Mm. Very well. Let's go on to the commissary, Mr. Carrington. Allow me to buy you a drink for your act of valor. What act of valor? Well, we better hurry before happy hour's over. Why, sir? Was her hair restyled unsatisfactorily? No, it's not that. It's just that she's been...
been acting peculiar lately. She hasn't been herself. Have you noticed anything? Well, yesterday I believe I saw her smile. My God, this is serious then. I'll be strange. I don't think we have anything to worry about. Yeah. 
Yes, Mr. Parrot here saved my life in the first episode. You idiot! That wasn't Parrot! That was Felix! Oh. What? Mr. Parrot, why don't you come with me? I believe there's a warp core that needs scrubby. Wait a minute. Everyone. Something Captain Quirk has said has made me stop and think. We are no worse than he. The next and feed it to the fishies! Could you move a little to the left, Kelp? You're blocking my shot. Ah! Now, no, Ralph! Calm down, Ralph! Think, we must think of the others! Think of little Peter and Percival and Robin! You know, gathering food, building huts, fetching water, playing volleyball. It's just great! Ruin my day! Now how am I supposed to play water pillow for only five people? <sighs> ah! Forget it! We'll build a new one! We'll build a new one! Now! We'll just have to build the signal fire down here. We're gonna get rescued by golly, Jock Hairdo or not. Now you three, go get some firewood. Now where's the lighter? Where's Salmon? Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen him since we were collecting food earlier. I think I saw him walk off into the woods. Oh. <laughs> Gentlemen, what are the charges? Sir, Samuel here was discovered consuming his punch on tray with the accompaniment of a red wine instead of like white wine. What shall we do with it? God, it is clear to me that there is only one punishment suitable for such a heinous and uncouth crime. Young Samuel, you are forced to not use the pool room again for one month. No, please! Yes! And the sauna, to let this be a lesson to all of you. If such a thing occurs again, I may not be so generous next time. I may be forced to use a pool stick sharpened at both ends.
and a tennis court, and an ice cream parlor, and a golf course, and the game room, and a bar. Stop it! That's it! I've had enough to hear with Jock Had You! Jock this! Jock that! Jock the other! Oh, sure! Oh, sure! Jock may have a huge, comfortable mansion up there on the hill, and maybe he has an indoor heated swimming pool, and perhaps he has a six court tennis arena. But there's one thing Jock doesn't have, and that's the will and tenacity to get off this island. So go join him if you want to. But there's one thing I, Rob Merriweather, will do, and that is get off this godforsaken island, even if I have to push it back to the mainland myself. Right, let's go. Wait to see the arcade. They do have a snack bar. around the island, you know, just for a little fun. We can't let you on. And why not? Members, members only. only. Ah, members only. Yeah, you must be a fool. Yeah. Ow! Oh, they've gone mad, Blocky! Wrong! Where's him? It's the police! Welcome to Jock Hedu's Fabulous Gold and Polo Club. How may I help you? Help me! Let me in! Let me in, you idiot! I'm in charge! Me! Me! Let me in! Let me in! You fool! May I ask who I'm speaking to? It's Ralph! Ralph, you know who it is! I'm the leader! I'm in charge! Do you have a membership card? Of sir? course not! I'm in charge! I'm sorry, sir. I'm not allowed to let you into the clubhouse without a membership card. Have a nice day. What? What? Let me in this clubhouse, you bloody idiot! Let me in, or I'll tear the bloody thing down and make you eat it! Do you hear me? Kelp, it's Ralph! Quite. Kelp, I'm going to have 
to ask you to leave now because you're disturbing my guests and you're disturbing my tennis match. Why don't you just shut up, you pathetic, indolent, trifling, lazy worm! What did you say? Ever since we got here, you've resisted every logical effort to get us off this island. You and your pointless upper class values and your bloody aristocrats. They mean nothing, absolutely nothing. Now, this is your last chance, hairdo. Either you see the right way and rejoin Rope's sensible lot of your own free will, or I will make you see right! but that's ridiculous. <laughs> well, that hit the spot. <laughs> you won't get away with this. <laughs> what are you going to do about it, little savage? You mere ignorant worker! Unwashed mass! You little native! <laughs> Servant! Now away, I say! Away! Before I have to pelt you with caviar! <laughs> 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 <laughs>